Enjoy a drink with me. The story I'm about to tell you is one of the most awkward moments in my entire life. life. Now, <laughs> it's about, I'm not going to say lost love, because that's not what I mean. I've been with my missus nearly 20 years. This was back in 2005. And this is about the Welsh bird. I'm not going to name a name because the one in a billion chance that she sees this. It was 2005. Back then, well, it was 2004 we started talking. I met her online in a chat room in UK chats. Now, back then, I was new to the internet and because none of my friends were online at two in the morning, I've always been quite a late person. I would go into chat rooms. And uh, went into the wrong one. And someone else came in at the same time. So I said hello. And this is back in the time with MSN Messenger. And at the time, I had like 40 people from around the world that would talk to on MSN Messenger just about random crap. And uh, we start chatting, we had things in common, and uh, we added each other in MSN, and we started chatting a lot then. And then we started kind of like web, web talking and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, this is so cringy when I tell you about this. I've always considered myself socially a majority, 10 years behind where I should be. So I'm 40 years old at the moment, which means I'm 30. At the time I was 20, just turned 21, and uh, I wasn't 10, 11, but I was a little bit behind. And she was 18, and uh, we were chatting quite a lot, you know, a lot in common musically and stuff like that. And then we started web chatting. <laughs> Back then, ooh, web chats weren't good. <laughs> you just, you know, you're not talking HD or anything like that. So things developed as we were chatting. <laughs> and we developed an online, online relationship. Back then it was not frowned upon, but there was a lot more taboo around it. Um, you know, all you about online, that's a bit weird. <laughs> God, it just makes me cringe. Like, like if you were on MSN Messenger, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, if you, if, you, if your name, you could have your name, you could have any kind of length of message, like up to, I think it's like 60 characters. And you would have song lyrics for what your mood was. And that was well into the emo scene at the time. So it was along those lines. And I remember that I, I was into this chick. Like, we didn't, um, when we used cams, we didn't, like, do the whole kind of, like, uh, sexual stuff. But, you know, we were chatting a couple hours a day. <clears throat> and when I said I was into this chick, I was into this chick. And uh, she was really pretty. And <laughs> I remember we had the name we were chatting. And we were so, like, I had, I had whatever for, I love this girl's name in Klingon. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> it was just... Oh, it was bad, it was bad. But we decided to meet up. She lived in Wales, a place called Abertillery, which is a small town about 30 miles south of Cardiff in Wales. Middle of Bob fucking nowhere, really. And um, I was really looking forward to it. And this was about two weeks before I was about to move out on my own for the first time. And, like... If this, if this journey was cursed, this was it. So I got the mumps, like, a week beforehand. And I was going to cancel, and she told me not to. Now, the reason I got the mumps is I got told by my mum that I had the... What was it called? It's like a vaccine. It's like rubella, mump, and mumps and something else. My mum told me I had that. My friend had the mumps. So I went down to hang, him out, hang out with him because I was like, I'm immune. 
my mum lied. My mum got it wrong. <laughs> so I developed the mumps, but instead of like like my glands going up all at one time, it was like it went up there and down, and then up there and down. And uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. And she goes, no, 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 coming up. So like, cool. So I got the train up to Bristol. Her parents came pick me up, and, this is, and this is the first time I'd ever met her. There was no awkwardness. Like she was, you know, she was not very tall, ginger glasses, jumped into my arms, right in front of her parents, got in the car. It was, you know, it just felt great. It felt right. And I was staying at her parents' house and uh, they were pretty well off. But as we're driving there, they're chatting to me and I don't understand. Like, I've always been bad at accents. And I'm kind of like, like, I understood her because we've been chatting a lot on camera. But like, they was really thick accents. And I'm like, yeah, you know. So I was, I just turned 21. She was close to 19, first year at uni. <laughs> and when we got to her house, massive house, this house was massive. And I'd been set up in the spare room. And this is gonna lead into, like I want to lead into how awkward the ending is because of how into her I was. <laughs> right. And uh, you know, I was sleeping in the spare room, but spent a lot of time in her room, you know. Walking across, and her parents knew this was going to happen, I'm assuming, because, you know, we thought we'd be, you know, all clever and quiet, but, you know, adults are adults, so are going to know what the hell was going on. <laughs> so, like, that weekend was fantastic. It was, it was just brilliant. Like, we, <laughs> I met her mates, they were all right, you know, they were really welcoming, and got to know them, and, you know, we were drinking, and, like, there was some sexy times. And uh, I don't think I'll perform too well, but she, she was beautiful. She was, she was so nice. So, so beautiful. <laughs> we had this one moment where, like, there was a lot of hills in the area. And we were making out in the back of the car, in, like this little alleyway. Not alleyway, like kind of like country lane. <laughs> and there was a knock on the window from <laughs> some farmer wondering what was going on. So she barely dressed had to get into the front of the car to drive off. <laughs> like, you know, we spent like two hours making a playlist of music for us to make out to. And, um, well, I was young and excitable. So we didn't get too far into that playlist. <laughs> but at the end of it, you know, I you know, met friends, I was there for the weekend, and I went home. And I was pretty good actually, having to go home, you know, really enjoyed it. But like two weeks later, we moved out. I moved out. And, you know, the way I chat was the internet. And back in 2005, you didn't have the internet on phones. And I had a phone number, but, you know, like, it was pay as you go and, it was expensive, you don't have like the, you know, you, you pay £10 and you get this amount of data and text messages. You didn't have anything like that, it was like, you paid £10, text message was like 10, 12p and stuff. And I was at uni, so I didn't have that much money. We didn't get the internet in this house for a couple of months, so I had to try to text her when I could, talk when I could, and uh, it was rough. But I, maybe because of my BPD, if I'm in a relationship, well, I'm in that relationship. And at uni, like, I had opportunities, and I was like, no, 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 I've got a girlfriend in Wales, I'm not gonna do anything. <laughs> so, it got to the point where I was like, you know, we're barely talking, can I come up and see you? And she went, yeah, 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 sure, okay. And then as it got closer to the date we set, she goes, I don't think it's right you should come up and see me. Like, I don't think you've got the time. I was like, no, because I'd left a load of stuff up there. Like, by accident, and because, you know, we thought we were in a relationship, we'd see each other more. <laughs> or, oh dear, this is when it starts getting awkward, so. She said, she was like, okay, she relented. And we'd barely been chatting and stuff, we just, we just couldn't. It's like of internet. I'd have to get online on, at university if I could. And back then, a lot of like the universities, they had like MSN Messenger cut off, so I had to use something called Trium, and it was this thing was doomed from the beginning. <laughs> but, oh, this story is funny. 
So, <clears throat> I text her going, look, you know, I'll come up. She goes, okay. So, I got the train to Cardiff. She had to, she was driving. She had to drive up to pick me up. She picked me up and we went back to her house. And it was kind of different. You know, the first time I met her, she jumped into my arms, even though she'd never seen me before. This time she was kind of distant. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe she's in the mood. Now, I didn't have the mumps at this time, but I was, I was in shape. But at the time I was wearing a long trench coat that I'd wear quite often. <laughs> I grew out my beard for the first time, but it was like this, this, like, not thick, like this gross scene, but it was like this kind of pubic kind of beard. And because it was ginger, I dyed it black using just for men for air. <laughs> what was even worse is, just for men, the longer you leave it in, the darker it goes. And I left it in for too long. So I had my brown hair, which was quite thick at the time. Like short and you know, kind of like spiked, <laughs> like the blackest pubic hair you've ever seen on a man's face. <laughs> and I got picked up, and I don't think she was, I don't think she liked that. So, got to her house, and her parents were, you know, they, they were really accepting and friendly last time. This time, they seemed not cold, but kind of like a bit awkward. So, I was chatting to them and stuff like that, and I was staying in a different room. So we set up, so, like, and that first night we were going out. She goes, we'll go out with my friends and stuff. And they had, like, this pub, there so weren't many in the area, I had, like, this kind of emo night because it was, you know, 2005. And I went, okay. So, you know, I snuck over, I snuck over to her room. And she was kind of cold offish, and I went, okay, you know, maybe she's just not in the mood. That's fine, that's fine. So I got dressed. And um, it was just off. That's the only way I could say it. So we, her parents dropped off, dropped us off at this club, and it was like a bunch of the same people I met before, and some other people. So you know, I was kind of going, "Oh, hello, how are you doing?" You know, stuff like that. And again, everyone just kind of seemed off. So. Some people are coming up, you know, they see me coming with that, they're like, who are you? And I said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm her boyfriend. And the awkwardness kind of went, oh, you're okay. And they walked off and I got mostly left alone. You know, some people came over to chat out of pity. And it got to about an hour in and I'm like, okay, she's barely paying attention to me. Fine. And then this, this blonde haired emo guy came up and he goes, oh, hello you. And he introduced himself. And I've gone, oh hello mate, nice to meet you. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and she, he goes, oh, who are you? And I've gone, oh yeah, I'm so and so's boyfriend. And he went, his face dropped, and he went, oh, okay, and he walked off. And because some other people have been awkward that night, I was just like, yeah, okay, cool. So, <clears throat> I've realised that. Not many people were talking to me, you know, it was, it was pretty crowded, and I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm getting wanker. So I was drinking snake bite. Now, if you don't know what snake bite is, it's half a pint of cider, half a pint of beer, and then some black currant thrown into it. For some reason, it seems more lethal than it should be, because, you know, it's just like beer and stuff, but, and I was on like my fifth pint of that. And I was like, oh shit, I need to piss. So, to get to the toilets, you had to walk through this door. And as you had the toilets, you had the, the men's, the females, and there were these stairs that went upstairs, I assume into like a staff room. And on these stairs was my girlfriend and the blonde emo guy that I'd spoken to earlier. He was crying, she was cuddling him, and as I walked past, I saw him and I just went, no, nah, that's not good. So I walked in and I went into the cubicle. And I was shouting, you know, had a piss, and I was like, Okay, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going on here. <laughs> so I went out the cubicle and I walked past him, hoping that I wasn't seen. And I heard this, hey, Luke, wing up. He went, okay. So I turned around, like kind of this, ah, I turned around. And uh, <laughs> she's looked at me and he's there. And she's gone, Luke, I'm so sorry. 
and I've kind of gone, okay. And the guy, you know, he, he reintroduced himself to me. Like, okay, like, you know, I had my hands in my back pocket and like, you know, it was kind of clenched under fist and I wanted to. And I've, I've never been that guy. So it was like, yeah, hello, nice to meet you. And I went, excuse me, and I went straight back into the men's toilets. And I went into the cubicle and I locked it. And this isn't in a kind of a, oh, oh, oh God, oh God, wait. This is in a kind of a, shit. <laughs> like, I'm in Wales. Nowhere, <laughs> like, nowhere near Cardiff. I'm staying at her house. I've just met her boyfriend. I've got to rely on her for someone to stay tonight. <laughs> And I just kind of stood there. I punched a wall because I was angry. You know what I mean? Like, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I'm in the middle of bar fuck nowhere. I don't know anyone. I've got nowhere to go. What the fuck? <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'm in there for about five, ten minutes because, like, you know, I've got the phone, but I've got no reception because I'm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and um, one of her friends came in. And a friend kind of like, she knocked on the door. She goes, Luke, you're in there. And I've gone, yep. And she goes, you're not going to do anything stupid, are you? And I was like, no, 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 not doing anything stupid. Just a little embarrassed. You know, like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And she goes, oh, okay. You're like, you know, come out when you're ready. I was like, when I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> so I went out. And what can I do? Like, oh, everyone there. Everyone fucking there knew that these two were a fucking couple. <laughs> and there's some English bloke who's like, I've always been quite big, going, hi, her boyfriend, yes. <laughs> so I go back out there and I'm like, and it's just, <laughs> it's just fucking awkward. Like, this bloke, this emo guy, blonde emo guy came up and started chatting to me a little bit and I'm like, Mate, fuck off. Like, you know, as far as I'm concerned, my girlfriend's cheated on me. But that's not the case. You know, these guys have probably been together for a while. You know, they probably met maybe a couple of weeks after I'd met her. And because they live near and stuff, they could have a relationship. Because I was 200 miles away, didn't have internet, no real phone. You know, it was... It made sense for them to develop into a relationship, but because I, like, if I'm in a relationship, I'm in it. Whilst I was with her, she was not with me, because for all intents and purposes, I wasn't real, you know? So, I sat there, and her friends kept chatting to me and stuff, and it was just, <laughs> it was just awkward. And after that, I got, I got pretty drunk on a snake bite, and I've gone, I can't deal with this. I've, I've got to pop outside. You know what I mean? It's like, I've got to get out of here. But there was nowhere to go because I was in the middle of nowhere. It's one in the morning. I'm drunk. Her friends are drunk. I've got to stay at her house. We'll get back to her house while her parents are picking this up. So I just went outside and it's raining and it's the evening night and I'm just there. And I wasn't, didn't have a car or anything. I'm just there like, sat on the stairs in the rain looking emo as fuck everyone's probably like a mixture of oh i feel sorry for him in ah, look at that sad fuck right because i'm just there going <laughs> what do i do there's nothing i can do <laughs> i was so good mate i was like i got it but i was so good so i got picked up by her parents Drop back, and she was like, "I'm so sorry, I've gone. Look, it does matter, you know. I, I don't remember what it was, but I've always been the kind of uh, instead of like the fuck you, fuck that. I was like, I get it, whatever. So I went to bed, and the next morning she had to drop me back off at the train station <laughs> in Cardiff, which is a 30 mile drive, and my train was until like 10, 15, like 11 o'clock." We got up at eight <laughs> and we had breakfast and it was just <laughs> sad. 
who I thought was my girlfriend, who was not my girlfriend, it was someone else's girlfriend. <laughs> like, uh, And the phone went. I was meant to be there for a week. So, like, I had, it wasn't an open return, it was like, go up this time at this day, and then return at this time at this day. So I had to go online and spend money on a new ticket. <laughs> and, like, the phone went a few times, and she was a chan. And it was her boyfriend phoned her up to see how she was there. And then he wanted to chat to me. And I went, okay, a bit weird. Now, I am, I'm not, the t I don't use the term hard. Because, you know, I'm hard as fuck. What, I'm much harder now than I was then. Right. <laughs> and, like, like I, I, but I'm also, like, three times the size of what I was. So I would have probably been like, you know, back then when I was drunk, I would have probably eaten. But he goes to me, hello mate, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, no glasses. Uh, yeah, well, not really mate, but you know, situation is the situation. He goes, well, maybe you shouldn't go home mate. And I went, I beg you'll put it. Guys, a fucking pussy. <laughs> I can describe it. He goes to me. Well, mate, you know, maybe we can get to know each other. Maybe we can become friends. I don't think that's a good idea, mate. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna speak to you again. With my breakfast. <laughs> and then her friend phoned up, wanted to chat to me. <clears throat> and it's really nice that, like, she was like, like, <laughs> this bloke, her boyfriend, phoned me up, wanted to chat to me to get to know me. As far as he's concerned, whether they were together when I met her or not, I've been fucking this bird. Or messing around, but you know. <laughs> and he wanted to get to know me. And then a friend phoned up and she was like, oh, you know, like, you know, you should stay home, we get to know each other, we can hang out and stuff. And I think her friend was like hitting on me out of pity or something like that. But again, I was into this bird, like, seriously, I was absolutely heartbroken. There's no way to describe it. I was heartbroken. But putting on a kind of a brave face, you know, a kind of a stoic man. <laughs> and I was like, no. And then we got kind of like dropped off, you know, and, and then like she picked me up, she drove me to the car, and it was just silence. It, there was just nothing to say. And uh, I got on the train <laughs> and left. That was the last time I saw her, I even spoke to her. <laughs> like, and I was just like, <laughs> but, you know, I went up on the Saturday, this was the Sunday, and I wasn't meant to leave till the Friday. <laughs> and I was just like, what the fun, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the following year, I met my missus, so that went well. But just, oh, oh, one of the most awkward moments of my entire life. But it's just funny, because, like, what else can I do? Right. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>